first insight is go with your gut feeling believe in what you believe in don't expect it to be rationalized by any rule any precedent any experiment someone else's experience don't believe in following someone else's success story trying to make it your own go with your gut feeling the whole world says it won't work you don't need a business plan to make it work you just need the gut feel that it's going to work my first insight would be it's an advantage to recognize that you are at a disadvantage uh don't seek peer approval don't look around don't expect people who are your you know your batchmates your friends people you grew up with people who are in the same industry people who are roughly in the same profile at you to love you if you do well don't work for them work for yourself okay my second insight if it's safe it's risky my third insight is uh, whatever you do make people think just make people think the greatest thought is that which enters somebody's mind and so whatever you do as an artist as a businessman anything you do enter people's minds we are in the business in the world of media into entering people's minds and you enter people's minds and their hearts will follow so we are in the fight for the mind space my third insight the most important skill in life is the ability to sell you know the rule spoils the journey because the rule in journalism was don't speak your mind don't don't talk report report be factual be factual don't go beyond the facts right just restrict yourself to the facts and keep it to that that was the rule in 1995 i find that 21 years later that rule is obsolete doesn't mean that facts are immaterial facts should be compromised no but in today's day and age uh opinion counts and the world is opening up everyone everybody has a point of view around 7 or 8 years we took the fairly bold decision of changing the editorial nature of the program i do in the way it just got constructed you know you can't have a very structured dialogue so you begin speaking up and you begin giving your own point of view but you know it works because it is more free it is more unfettered it is not restrained it helps you open up and so what if it was the golden rule in journalism never to express your point of view that rule wasn't set in stone it's not a religious edict you changed it has journalism become worse for that i don't think so if i had just done journalism the way it was taught to me in 95 then i would not be here today i'd perhaps be retiring So my first insight was if you remember it's an advantage to recognize that you are at a disadvantage I've kind of arrived at this insight the hard way after 28 years at Madison most often in business I find the number one player gets a little pompous gets a little immodest gets takes things for granted takes his success for granted takes his client for granted and all of it comes with this money power and number one position and all of that and i think that brings about a certain amount of downfall so therefore you know i constantly tell my people that look we are operating at a huge disadvantage and the in this insight is reinforced every time we have been in a tough situation and we come out winning because we know that we have worked much harder and we have worked much smarter than our competition did because fortunately for us there is no other way to survive Yeah that's great Sam I I actually would like to follow up from that and you know I said earlier that I think too much planning is bad and we like to all become safe behind numbers and feel that we are you know we are we are going to succeed because the numbers look good on a screen uh and then I also said that we are in the game of entering people's minds I spoke about going from the gut let me give you a simple example from a life experience it's unimaginable that you can run a channel from Mumbai and Delhi is the political capital of India that's where the news is this is the only news organization at a national level running out of Mumbai out of what used to be a cotton mill shed in lower parel we had the least number of people we spent the least money 
My staff size was one third of what my competitors were. Then why did we win? A simple story which we said always, we said, in a story between an elephant, a horse, and a deer, what would you be? I said, be the deer. And I said this in an editorial meeting. I said, be the deer, because the fantastic thing about the deer is it wins not because of size. It doesn't win because of be having an early start. It wins because you cannot predict its direction. It pirouettes around. It has the ability to change direction. So horse can't run through a forest, but a deer can. So my life experience, because I was saying all these things to motivate my extremely confused team of people who were the youngest of all, sitting in Mumbai, and everybody said, you're not times now, you're times when? You're ridiculed. And, you know, nobody knew me. These were big guys, all the other big anchors, right? So the destiny is against you. How do you change the direction? I understood this little value, so I thought I'd merge my two thoughts earlier, which is too much planning is bad, and keep them engaged, enter people's minds, and I wanted to merge that with what my, my very respected friend on the other side said about business, because I think, you know, Sam is also as much an artist as any of us. I think you'll understand where I'm coming from. So my second insight was, if it's safe, it's risky. Whenever we have tried to play very safe, we have failed. Whenever we have said, this looks like a risky proposition, let's not touch it. We have let a golden opportunity go by. On the other hand, when we have taken a risk, no doubt, a calculated, well thought through risk, not always, but more often than not, we have succeeded. Now, the most powerful example I have from my book relates to one of my larger and older clients, Procter & Gamble. After winning the AOR, I was told we would have to hire 15 experienced media professionals to handle 100% of the P&G business instead of the erstwhile 60%, and we would earn 2.5% instead of 10%. A disaster of a proposition, anybody would say, from an agency perspective. Something told me that it looks like a risky proposition uh, from a financial and monetary point of view today. But look at the reputation, the honor, the pizzazz, the heft that it will bring. I went ahead with the decision, told PNG, okay, it's acceptable to us. And as some of you know, the rest is history. We now run uh, not so large, but not so small either media loan business. Wow. business. So I say to you, if it's safe, it's risky. Yeah. I want to take up from what you've said. And... Um, one of my insights was to go with your gut. Now, the, actually, I want to revise that a little bit because the, there's a story to going with your gut and there's a story, the other part of you is being paranoid. We are humans and in the newsroom, on the one side, you want to go with your gut. You want to break the story. You want to be first. You want to get the biggest. You want to do everything first. And you kill to get there. And on the other side, you are paranoid. Something should not go wrong. Because it's an unforgiving business. You can work hard for 20 years, but one big strategic mistake and your credibility, your editorial guidance, the position you have, defamation cases, everything can go wrong forever. And I've been constantly bat battling between my gut and being paranoid. This battle is very important for all good professionals. But eventually, gut must win. Paranoia must lose. My third insight was on the ability to sell. Many experiences have taught me 
that in our business actually creativity is not as difficult to come by as is commonly believed quality of a product is not so difficult to come by even in a country like india but the ability to sell a creative product or the ability to sell a good quality product is an actually serious short supply in our country and in most countries i feel there are more clears and cons lines waiting today in creative directors portfolio bags because many a great campaign could not be sold on a related point i must say that stature considerably helps in selling one's idea and the lack of it hinders it look at all of this and the one insight that i realize is it's time for some really solid disruption i'm looking for the next big disruption in the world of media and particularly in the world of news media and for me that disruption will be new organizations new people new thinking new ideas using the confluence of high potency mediums like television and digital to break through the clutter not at a national but also potentially in a medium term at an international level okay i would say i am somewhere beginning to come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as absolute honesty there are actually shades of dishonesty unfortunately uh, we all have to live with this shades of gray as they say and i think at some level i think your ability to succeed in life depends on your ability to deal with these shades of gray